In previous tutorials, I talked about basic raster calculations that we can perform on raster data. Also look at different functionalities such as you know overlay operations, extracts, and other types of things that we can do. In this tutorial, we're going to look specifically at more advanced map algebra or raster calculator, calculator operations that can be performed within ArcGIS. The raster calculator or map algebra as it's called now is an extension of the spatial analyst toolbar. And if we look on our, you know, click on our toolbox functionality, we'd see a toolbar, something docked to the right here, and I see this spatial analyst. I'm going to talk specifically about this raster calculator here. And I can double click on it. Well, when you click on this, you can see unable to execute the selected tool. And basically that means it's an, it's an extension. So if I go to customize extensions, these are the different extensions that we have. Depending upon you know, your level of licensure, we have different licenses that allow different functionalities. I can click on spatial analyst and allows me to run that license now. So now I can double click on raster calculator and you can see what I have here. It looks a lot like our field calculator, kind of like our field calculator when we calculate different attributes for your vector data. But we can see the different types of raster data that we're looking at here. I'm looking at an area here of northwestern Durham and this is just the topo quad so this is I think a 15 15 minute topo quad, so an eighth of a degree by an eighth of a degree. Um, but we can see this here. I've got elevations here. Okay, and you can see the low is 50.26 up to 226.593. I've got national land cover data set. So I can zoom in and we can see this land cover data set at 30 meter pixel resolution. And last but not least, I've got some imagery, and I'll talk about this a little bit later here, from the North Carolina One Map server. And we'll talk about how to extract data from this. But you can see your red, green, blue, this is your true color imagery that we're looking at here. I'll uncheck this because it's uh, sitting on a server over in Raleigh. It gets a little bit big to extract, zoom, zoom in, zoom out, especially on a Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to zoom to my layer here. Now when I click on my raster calculator, I'm just going to mention couple different types of calculations that we can run. And this is just going to uh, complement some of the previous lectures that we're going to look at. We can see here our DEM, Northwestern Durham State Plain. This is our digital elevation model here. The high is 226, the low is 50. I'm going to assume that this is in, uh, this is in meters and I want to convert this to feet. So we're just going to talk about some of the different calculations that we can run on this. I can click on DEM times 3.28 and remember when we create we want a brand new raster query calculation or whatnot it's going to create a brand new layer remember on our folder here I'm going to go to my temp and I think I have a working um, tutorial output we're going to just call this DEM in feet. Okay. If I click OK, these are some of the types of raster calculations that I can do. So you can see it's just been multiplied by a factor of 3.28. So I got our high elevations of 743 feet, our low elevations down here towards Jordan Lake of 164 feet above sea level. If I click on the properties, you can see my source, it's about six, about seven meg. It's a floating point. This talks about some of the basic attributes or some of the properties attached to this. This is in state plane. I think we have some, uh, we have some cell sizes here. And this is a uh, nine meter, about 10 meter, um, 10 meter resolution here. So this is you know, pretty decent data here. And I think this was extracted at one point in time from some of your, you know, some of your DEM. Uh, data from the USGS. So these are some types of calculations that we can do. There are other types of calculations too. Okay. Well, we're going to generate Boolean output. So I might want to look at something like the Durham Northwest Quad. Remember, like we said before, if you've worked with National Land Cover Data Set, this is extracted from Landsat data, and it looks it looks at the Anderson classification scheme. So 11 is wetland. Uh, 21, 22, 23, 24. These are some type of uh, developed 
uh, 41, 42, 43 are uh, some type of forced. And I think there's you know, obviously more categories than this here. But we can extract out these categories that give the values of you know, 0 or 1, false or true. In this case, I'm just going to find everything that's 24. Okay. So our Northwest Durham Quad. Now, in this case, I'm going to use the double equals to sign. Okay. Double equal to sign mean is equal to. In computer programming language, equal to means take on the value of. You don't see an equal to sign here. It takes on the value of. So x equals 3 basically means that some variable we're going to call x takes on the, takes on the value of x. And 3 equals x means something totally different. Okay, in this case, we're going to just look at 24. And I'm just going to say category 24. Click OK. And now you can see everything here with the value of 1 is in category 24. Anything in 0 is not. So these are a couple of simple queries that we can run. Now let's get more complex. I want to find anything that's 21, 22, 23, or 24. We have these parentheses. It's really important that when we generate these compound queries, we use parentheses so we can work inside out. So I've got these parentheses, and I have this line right here. This line means or. The ampersand means and. So now what we're going to look at, I want to see that Northwest Durham Quad equals 21 and the parentheses, or Northwest Durham equals 22, or Northwest Durham Quad equals 23, finally, or Northwest Durham Quad equals 24. Okay. I'm going to, and I'm actually going to Okay, so basically we're looking at anything that's 21 or 22 or 23 or 24. A lot of times people run into some of these logical errors where they use the AND. This pixel, when I, if I click on any one of these pixels, it can only have one possible value. Okay, so it can't be 21 and 22 at the same time. Typically when we work with raster data, there's only going to be one attribute attached to it. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to run it here. Okay, so now we can see these particular values that are going to be ones are going to be that satisfy this query. And if I right mouse click, open up my attribute field or open up my attribute table, you'll see how the attribute table looks different. So there's 91,921 zeros, falses, 81,638 trues that are going to be some type of develop, low intensity, high intensity developed. Okay? And we can calculate percentages from these or whatnot. Okay? If I really wanted to, I can uh, look at my statistics, find the sums, and all that other good stuff too. Last thing that I'm going to do is create a compound query. Now I want to find areas that are prone to uh, flooding. And these are basically going to be areas that satisfied one in this prior query and are less than 300 feet in elevation. Okay. We're looking for areas that are flooding, runoff, impermeable surfaces that are low elevation, where areas where water wants to run. Okay. I'm going to do this again. Now my raster calculator, and I can start to combine this category with this one, or I can just cut and paste this thing back in. Now these are going to be compound queries, so I want to generate these queries. So I want to find everything that's going to be 21, 22, 23, or 24, and I also want to see where the elevation is less than or equal to I'll say 300 in this case, 300. 
Okay, so you can see the reason why I put the parentheses to the left, one more parentheses, is that it wants to be generated, it wants to be generated explicitly or separately of the DEM. So I want to generate these separately. Okay, so all of these are going to be combined separately and then combined together and then combined with the less than 300 feet. Okay. I'll type in final I'll run this and see what we have here. Okay, so all the ones, and I can change the color on these. I can make these hollow. And I can zoom in right here if I wanted to. Okay, so these areas have low elevation. Okay, these areas in blue, we can see they're 21, 22, 23, or 24. We don't care which one because we just use that OR command and then they have low elevation. Okay, They have low elevation right here. Okay. And you can see those are indicated by my darker areas for my DEMs. And if I really want to, now I can superimpose my imagery on top. Look at these particular areas and these might be areas that are prone to you know flooding or runoff or whatever we're looking at here. Okay. If we really wanted to we can set these up to from my display. Set it up to be, I don't know, 50% transparency. And make some high quality maps out of these. But we know when we look at this category 1, 21 to 24, it needs to be less than the number of pixels that are available in this because we're doing the AND combination. When I go back here, I've just got a couple other things that I'll mention. The parentheses are extremely important. The double equal to sign is something we haven't seen before with raster data. This tilde is a conditional not. I haven't used it that often. And then we have the less than or equal to signs here. We also have a number of mathematical functions. We have something called the conditional. Just make sure you follow directions on how to run that conditional. Basically, if the elevation is less than 300, make it zero, otherwise make it one. So there's lots of other ways that we can do this. We're set it to no data or no values or nulls. Um, and then we have things like absolute values or exponents, um, you know, convert data to floats because you can see I've got some floating values over here in the left while I have some categorical uh, categorical values here. And then you, your whole uh, gamut of your uh, trigonometric functions. So this is a really powerful tool. I just wanted to mention a few things about it before we you know, worked on some of these in our class.